Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Today our group will be presenting the 5.0 managing food commodities. I, Nurul Iza, will be presenting the first subtopic which is managing perishables. Definition of perishables commodities. Items which have finite or limited shelf life are classified as perishable items. This includes items such as meat, vegetables, dairy products, and prescription drugs. Perishable foods such as fruits and vegetables, dairy, fish, and meat products have a limited shelf life after harvest or production. Perishable foods are those likely to spoil, decay, or become unsafe to consume if not kept refrigerated at 4.4 Celsius or below, or frozen at negative 17.8 Celsius or below. It must be ensured that these products are fresh until it reaches the consumer. Next is type of perishable commodities. There are two types of it. Firstly, perishable commodities, which is dairy products and eggs, meat and poultry, seafood, cooked food and leftover, also fruit and vegetables. Next, semi-perishable commodities. These are those that do not require refrigeration but still have a limited shelf life. They include things like potatoes, onions, pumpkins, and salamis. These things kept on shelf in the storeroom complex where they can get plenty of air circulation around them. For example, potatoes need to be kept away from light as they will start sprouting. Managing Perishable Commodities Accounting for Perishable Goods Manager Accounting has come up with methods for organizing inventory for perishable goods. The single period inventory control system can help to elevate many issues involved with automatically replenishing inventory when it's down. Secondly, automatic inventory. It is the system that automatically order goods when supply is low. It is that efficient and you won't even ever miss a sale. Next, in the managing perishable communities is the single period inventory system. The single period inventory system assumes that you only order enough supply for one period. This system will limit the amount of inventory that can be spoiled, go bad, or be otherwise obsolete. Lastly is the FIFO inventory valuation. FIFO inventory valuation assumes that the first inventory purchase is the first inventory sold. This is the best valuation method to use for perishables inventory and periods of rising inventory prices, it is a strategy that helps to boost net income and asset size. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Aaron Elvin Uping Anak Bernadine. I would like to present 5.2, that is non-perishable commodities. Definition of non-perishable commodities. According to Christopher Muscato in 2019, Non-perishable commodities are those with much longer shelf life and don't require refrigeration in order to sustain this long shelf life. It can be last for a longer time. It can be last for a year or even longer than a year. Commonly, non-perishable commodities we always using preservatives to maintain the flavor of the product. Non-perishable foods include canned goods, dry goods, and dehydrated foods. The example of non-perishable food are such as flour, spices, canned goods, jars, bottles, dried packet goods. Go on to the next one, that is two classification of non-perishable food. First one is canned food. It is a method of preserving food in which the food contains are processed and sealed in an airtight container or steel canteen. For food items packages in a wrap, food items wrapped in the packages such as pouch, bag, box, cup, tray, can, tube, bottle, or other container form. Types of non-perishable commodities. Non-perishable commodities are those commodities which deteriorate slowly when it is stored properly. Non-perishable commodities includes grains beans, fruits and vegetables, instant soup, sauces, shelf-stable milk and non-dairy milk, and drinks. First, grains. 
whole grains like flour, cereal, oats, rice, and barley have a much longer shelf life than other popular but perishable carb sources like bread, making it a smart choice for a long-term food storage. Beans, dried and canned beans are smart, non-perishable food choices. Canned beans can be kept at room temperature for two to five years while dried beans can last 10 or more years depending of the packaging. Fruits and vegetables. Although most fruit and vegetables have a short shelf life, dried produce is considered non-perishable. When properly stored, most dry food can be safely kept at room temperature for up to one year. Vacuum sealed packaging can help to prevent spoilage. Instant soups. Canned and dried soups are low in acid and can last up to five years at room temperature. The exception is tomato best varieties, which have a shelf life of about 18 months. Sauces. Commonly found in a glass bottle, or plastic bottle. It can be kept in the room temperature or in the refrigerator. Shelf stable milk and non-dairy milk. Fresh milk and some non-dairy alternatives like almond and coconut milks have to be refrigerated. Shelf stable milks and many non-dairy milks are made to keep at room temperature. Shelf stable or aseptic milk is processed and packaged differently than regular milk because it is heated to higher temperatures and packed in sterile containers. Lastly, drinks. The packaging of drinks can be in canned drinks, plastic bottle, glass bottle, and box packaging. This can be found a lot in a supermarket and can be kept in a room temperature or in the refrigerator for a long-lasting flavors. Managing non-perishable commodities. Non-perishable commodities are refers to the items that have an expiration date, such as food that will stay fresh if not taken in a certain amount of time. Managing non-perishable items needs to be taken as a serious matter to avoid spoilage of the product when it is open for consumption. There are some procedures of managing non-perishable items. First of all, FIFO practices. The storeroom should be easy to keep clean and free from rodents and vermin. This means all wall, ceiling, and floor openings should be sealed and protected to prevent access. It should be designed so it is easy to arrange and rearrange supplies to facilitate stock rotation. The best arrangement is to have shelves situated in the middle of the room so they can be stocked from both sides. This allows you to protect stock by simply pushing out old stock by sliding new stock in the front to the other side of the shelf. This guarantees that first items received will be the first items used, or the first in, first out concept in store rotation. Dry food products. Dry food should be located near the receiving area and to close to the main kitchen. Unfortunately, the storeroom for dry food is often an afterthought in food service facility design and the area design needed for storage is sometimes in an inconvenient location. The area should be dry and cool to prevent spoilage and the swelling of canned goods. The ideal temperature range is 10 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. 
refrigerated products. The refrigerator, whether a walk-in or a standard upright, is an important component in planning the storage of food items. Most non-perishable commodities must be stored in the refrigerator to delay the deterioration and decomposition. The suitable temperature of the refrigerator for the refrigerated products are needed to be taken care of to avoid the spoilage of the product. The ideal temperature range is 0 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius. Label Storage Areas Consider a labeling system for keeping the items together and reminding everyone with access to the pantry about the layout. Systematic arrangement will make things become more easier to manage the storage of non-perishable items. My name is Nur Izati Binti Samsudin. Next, for 5.3, I will present about managing canned item. Principle of canning is food preservation method where food that has been cleaned and properly prepared is filled into a container and hermetically sealed. The container is then heated to a set temperature and time to kill food spoilage, micro microorganism, and any pathogen that cause foodborne illness. The airtight seal is necessary to prevent recontamination of the product after it is heat sterilized. Canned foods that are properly processed can be kept for an indefinite period of time. Metal cans, glass jar, flexible pouches, and rigid tray are the major types of container used for canning purpose. The canning of food began early within the 19th century once Nicholas Apart, a French cook and a candy maker, more established a contents common by Napoleon I. Napoleon Bonaparte hoped to produce his trips with well some preserved foods once on campaign. And in 1810, the Englishman Peter Duran received a patent for food preservation. He used container made from thin coated of iron, hoping to provide a least breakable and a load of easily transport product. The purpose of canning is food preservation. From this perspective, canning whether the container is metal or glass, they are also provide the same protection. Next, I will explain how to manage canned commodities. I will use some example so all of us will know easier to understand about this topic. I will using fruit and vegetable canning as example. The process of canning itself may be envisioned as four major operation. Number one, food preparation and filling. Fruit canning begins with washing the fruits, assorting and grading step, peeling and coring a product that requires it, chopping and slicing if desired, and optionally cooking of the fruit before it is placed in a can. Vegetable processes is similar, but with some of the steps arranged in a different order. Most vegetables are subjected to blanching after being washed, sorted, and cut. Blanching is intended to kill off bacteria by immersing the vegetable briefly in boiling water. Vegetables are peeled, if required, after blanching and cooking. Another wash cycle follows peeling. Number 2. Container sealing Filled containers are vacuum sealed. This means that air is thrown out of the container immediately before it is sealed. Encomplish either by sealing the cans while their contents are hot or sealing them in a vacuum chamber. The object is to create a pressure inside the can lower than atmosphere. Pressure to keep sealed tight to remove as much free oxygen from the can as possible and to keep cans from building later if used at high altitudes. Number three, heat sterilization. This crucial process in canning follows sealing. It is produced by heating, 
the contents briefly to a boiling temperature. In many modern processes, sterilization of the product and of the container itself are separate. And the last point is cooling, labeling, and storage. The whole product is next cooled and dry. After that level are uh, affixed, cans are placed in packing box. For our additional information, the table show about commodities and canned good storage guideline, so we can refer this table to make sure our canned food is well stored in the right place. That's all from us. Thank you. 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 That's all from us. Thank you.